My name is Lauren Price, and I'm a networking specialist, customer engineer at Google Cloud. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some networking concepts for GKE that are helpful to know for implementation, security, and connectivity. Stay tuned. Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, provides a managed environment for deploying, managing, and scaling your containerized applications using Google infrastructure. In GKE, a cluster consists of at least one control plane and multiple worker machines called nodes. The control plane runs the control plane processes, including the Kubernetes API server, scheduler, and core resource controllers. A cluster typically has one or more nodes, which are the worker machines that run your containerized applications and other workloads. The individual machines are Compute Engine VM instances that GKE creates on your behalf when you create a cluster. The control plane runs in a Google managed VPC and the nodes run in the user VPC. There are so many things that we could talk about related to GKE and networking, but we're gonna focus our conversation today on just a few concepts all related to standard GKE clusters. GKE clusters can be distinguished according to the way they route traffic from one pod to another pod. A cluster that uses Google Cloud Routes is called a route space cluster. A cluster that uses alias IPs is called a VPC native cluster. VPC native is the recommended type and is the default for new clusters in newer versions of GKE. Because route space clusters are no longer recommended, we'll focus more on VPC native clusters. VPC native clusters have several benefits. Pod IP addresses are natively routable. Pod IP address ranges do not depend on custom static routes. Instead, automatically generated subnet routes handle routing for VPC native clusters. You can create firewall rules that apply to just pod IP address ranges. Pod IP address ranges and all alias IPs in general are accessible from on-premises networks connected with Cloud VPN or Cloud Interconnect. When you create a VPC native cluster, you specify a subnet in a VPC network. The cluster uses three unique subnet IP address ranges, a primary subnet IP address range for all node IP addresses, a secondary IP address range for all pod IP addresses, and another secondary IP address range for all service addresses. It's important to plan ahead with respect to sizing your GKE clusters to make sure enough IP space has been allocated and the desired scale can be achieved. By default, GKE allocates a slash 24 alias IP range to each node for the pods running on it. On each node, those 256 alias IP addresses are used to support up to 110 pods. This can be reduced if IP space is limited or that number of pods isn't needed. Keep in mind that when creating clusters in a shared VPC environment, GKE cannot manage secondary IP address ranges. A network admin in the shared VPC host project must create the subnet and secondary IP address ranges before you can create the cluster. This is unique to shared VPC only. VPC native clusters have the option to be created as public or private. Public clusters deploy the control plane and nodes with public IP addresses so they can be accessible over the internet. For the control plane, authentication and authorization is still in place to restrict public calls and the worker nodes can be protected by firewall rules. But what if you need a cluster with an increased security posture? Private clusters are better in this situation. Private clusters use nodes that do not have external IP addresses. This means that clients on the internet cannot connect to the IP addresses of the nodes. Unlike a public cluster, a private cluster has both a private and public endpoint for the control plane. You must specify a unique slash 28 IP address range for the control plane's private endpoint, and you can choose to disable the control plane's public endpoint. In private clusters, the control plane's VPC network is connected to your cluster's VPC network with VPC network peering. A common VPC network peering connection is used if the clusters are in the same location and use the same VPC network. Remember that because the GKE control plane uses a peering connection, you must keep in mind the network location of where you are trying to access the control plane. 
If your control plane access is separated by more than one peering connection, you'll need a proxy to access the private endpoint, or you'll need to use the public endpoint. One important topic to discuss when it comes to routing is the use of IP masquerade agent. IP masquerading is a form of source network address translation used to perform many-to-one IP address translations. By using the IP masquerade agent, GKE can change the source IP address of packets sent from pods to the source IP address of the node the pod is hosted on. Masquerading a packet source is useful when a recipient is configured to receive packets only from the cluster's node IP addresses. Now that we've talked about how to access the control plane, let's talk about how to access services hosted on the private GKE clusters. There are many ways that services can be exposed, but today we'll focus on three. Services of type load balancer, the ingress object, and the gateway API. All of these options make use of native Google Cloud load balancers and provide container native load balancing features using network endpoint groups, meaning traffic is load balanced directly to the pod endpoints, eliminating the number of hops the traffic must take. Let's start with service of type load balancer. The idea of a service is to group a set of pod endpoints into a single resource. In a Kubernetes cluster, each pod has an internal IP address. But the pods in a deployment come and go, and their IP addresses change, so it doesn't make sense to use pod IP addresses directly. With a service, you get a stable IP address that lasts for the life of the service, even as the IP addresses of the member pods change. A service also provides load balancing. Clients call a single stable IP address, and their requests are balanced across the pods that are members of the service. When you create a service of type load balancer, Google Cloud configures a network load balancer in your project. The load balancer has a stable IP address that is accessible from outside of your network. A network load balancer is pass-through, meaning it forwards packets with no change to the source and destination IP addresses. External clients call the service by using the load balancer's IP address and the TCP port specified. The request is forwarded to one of the member pods on the TCP port specified by target port. An ingress object defines rules for routing HTTPS traffic to applications running in a cluster. An ingress object is associated with one or more service objects, each of which is associated with a set of pods. GKE ingresses can either use the external HTTPS load balancer or the internal HTTPS load balancer, depending on the source of your traffic. Multiple backend services can be exposed through the same ingress object, and traffic can be routed using the URL map on the load balancer. Additionally, we have the Gateway API to provide access to services. As of the making of this video, the Gateway API is still in preview. The Gateway API is an open source standard for service networking. The Gateway API evolves the ingress resource and improves upon it by providing API resources to correspond more closely to organizational roles of cluster managers, aligning with open source standards and providing more advanced traffic management features natively rather than having to use custom annotations. The Gateway API contains the following resource types. The Gateway class defines a cluster scoped resource that's a template for creating load balancers in a cluster. A Gateway defines where and how the load balancers listen for traffic. Cluster operators create gateways in their clusters based on a Gateway class. GKE creates load balancers that implement the configuration defined in the Gateway resource. An HTTP route defines protocol-specific rules for routing requests from a gateway to Kubernetes services. GKE supports HTTP routes for HTTPS-based traffic routing. Application developers create HTTP routes to expose their HTTP applications using gateways. Now let's jump to a few security topics. Private GKE control planes have both public and private endpoints and users have the option to use authorized networks on both of the endpoints to allow list access to specific IP ranges. Other security features to consider are using IAM to assign fine-grained control to users and service accounts interacting with the GKE cluster. Role-based access control can be used inside the cluster. 
A role can be scoped to a specific Kubernetes object and defines which actions the role grants in relation to that object. Workload identity allows a Kubernetes service account in your GKE cluster to act as an IAM service account. Pods that use the configured Kubernetes service account automatically authenticate as the IAM service account when accessing Google Cloud APIs. Using workload identity allows you to assign distinct fine grain identities and authorization for each application in your cluster. Finally, firewall rules can be used to protect traffic to clusters, while network policies can be used to protect traffic within the clusters. So let's summarize the three most important takeaways from today. There are VPC native and routes-based cluster types, as well as public and private clusters. Make use of service type load balancer, the ingress object in gateway API for container optimized load balancing. Make sure your cluster and control plane are properly protected with authorized networks, firewall rules, and network policies. Thanks for watching. If we missed any topics you'd like to hear more about, let us know in the comments below and look out for another video on the concepts of networking for Google Cloud's managed services.